All right. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Who is Lola Shone? Because it's not just about me. Uh, by the way, I have a student of mine here. Okay. And, uh, Hello, yes. student. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> All right. So let's meet Lola Shone first. Okay. So I am 46 years old. I um, am a mom of four children. I think I should just get that out of the way because that's <laughs> probably the most important thing to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I also um, run the Aki Arts and Book Festival and the Kaduna Book and Arts Festival. Um, I'm a publisher. So I, have, I also run Weeder Books. I'm also a bookseller. So I also run a bookstore in Ikeja GRA here. Okay. Um, but I think the, the aspect of my life that's, that's of most interest to me is the fact that I am a writer as well. So I have written three books of poems, one novel. Um, I have another one on the way. And, great, um, great. Thank you. A handful for, of children's books. Thank you for giving us that uh, info. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should have so so much but um we have such a little time um let's start straight from the literary aspect i know i can testify that um we started with um we cut our teeth you know in the literary world from um you know those days a college festival writers workshop you know and all that but um those who are do not know yet. Tell us what informed, you know, your interest in the in the arts. Um, I think it's um, primarily um, going to school in Edinburgh. Well, I left for boarding school in Edinburgh when I was um, six years old, and I went to a school where you know, reading, talking about books and writing, these things were just part of ordinary day life. Mm -hmm. So it was very much what I did every day. After lunch, every day, we had to read for 45 minutes. Before bed, we had to read. You talk about books. Your teacher is reading to you in the English lesson or asking one of the students to read. So it was just very much a part of my life. It wasn't something you know, that I thought was, was particularly unusual. But I also feel that when I was about seven, um, I got this book in school from, um, that was written by the Prince, of, Prince Charles. Um, and it was called The Old Man of Loch mm -hmm. And for me, that was the first, my first um, opportunity to be able to connect an author with a book. So you read all these books and you know who wrote the books from Enid Blyton. You know who the authors are, mm -hmm. but because most of them are dead, mm -hmm. there's a way in which you remove the author from the reading experience mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're young. Yeah. So I, very early on, I was able to make that connection between somebody I knew was in the papers all the time, you know, somebody that was there in society, very visible to the writing of a book. So I had a consciousness and an awareness um, of what was possible. But even then, I didn't think it was um, an area that I wanted to pursue. Um, I didn't get that feeling. I didn't get the vote of confidence um, or the boost that I needed until I actually got to um, the Ogun State University mm -hmm. and it was a few of my lecturers who pushed me and, and told me that there was you know my my poetry was was decent and as soon as I left uni I joined the Association of Nigerian Authors. Shesson Ajayi on my mind now. Of course we have Shesson Ajayi but beyond that it was also people like Wale Oyedele Mm -hmm. Even yeah. even um, mm -hmm. there was a man in there was a particular man who taught us creative writing. His uh, name is Le Con, uh, Le Con oh. No, no, not him. He, he was 
I don't know. It's, it seems to, be to describe anybody. I can describe him. I can see him oh, really? before my eyes, can't but I can't remember now. his name. Um, and he he taught us creative writing in I think it was in year three or year four, mm. and he was really. Um, he inspired me a lot and a lot of it just came from the positive reinforcement um, and and I think I mean you're you're an you're an academic and I have spent a lot of my years being a, a class teacher um, and a deputy head administration in schools and we must never ever ever underestimate the power of um, of reinforcing um, to a student that we find has potential or promise, being able to tell that child and guide them in some way, because those things that we say can make all the difference in a child's, in a kid's mind. Mm. So, mm. you know, I had, I still feel that I had amazing um, lecturers yeah. when I was at yeah. the, while I was at the university, yeah. I thought I got a really good kind of, quality education sure, sure, um, we did. that's we did. where i was introduced to all the the um the african-american writers who yes. i think have had yes. the biggest influence on mm -hmm. my life actually mm -hmm. as, as a writer um mm -hmm. there's so much of my work that i lean on to be morrison um i'm and, uh, you know, but that's because I was introduced to Alice Walker and to Zaki mm -hmm. Shange, um, Tony Cade Bambara, Jamaica yeah. Kincaid, all those um, African-American, but also yeah. Caribbean um, female authors. authors. And yeah. absolute love for those writers mm. was due to Walio Yedili, who didn't stop talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Honestly. you know, and when I told him I wanted to write on Toni Morrison, he was so excited because it didn't look like anybody had done it. Yeah. And um, I wrote that thesis, which I put everything into. And, and I, I, I mean, I think I got an A for it. And um, mm. Neo, um, Professor Neo Shindari, oh, Shindari. <laughs> when I met him in UI, said that it would have scored the same if it were um, were to be a, a master's, master's thesis, well. <laughs> I was very proud. Wow! Not just for Great. me, but because of Wale Oyedele. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How he pushed me and mm. said, "This you do more. This is not enough. Go and research this. Go and you know." Wow. And then I would think this man is trying to kill me. <laughs> but you know, when I saw the results myself, so I'm just saying now that you from know. teacher to teacher that yeah. these conversations that we have with our students are so critical. Honestly, honestly. Wonderful, wonderful. Really, really wonderful. Let's talk about your book. We don't have much time. Let's talk about the okay. secret lives of Babasegi's wives. Um, I know that, um, you know, those who are in the school of thought of art for art's sake will say, look, this, this, this piece, let's take it as it says. But um, as a realist, I want to always peep into that background that influenced, you know, those characters. Uh, did you start out originally to write a feminist text while writing that book? No, no. I, I, I um, set out to write a story. It wow. was a story that I had heard when I was 14 years old. Um, it mm. was told to me by my brother's girlfriend. Um, her name was Anne, and she was a medical student at, at UCH. And I was um, in secondary school, still very upset and angry after reading um, A Lion and a Jewel by Professor Wale Shoyinka. I was so upset. Now, what kind of man is this Baroka? You know, is this all my life is as a woman? I'm just here. And eventually I'll be waiting for one man to come and um, pick me off my feet. Where's my life in all this? You know, so I was, you know, I even as a teenager I was just so angry mm. you know that I didn't feel that there were any books that um well that there were many many books that that repre that that kind of captured the the um the survival instinct of the African woman um which involves sometimes having to find alternative means of being able to stay within this institution of marriage 
that many of them um, grow up being told that they have to live and adapt to, mm -hmm. live for and adapt to. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, she, she was a medical student. She came and she said, "Oh, Lola, oh my God, I have to tell you what happened in hospital today." And then she said, "No, no, no, I can't even tell you that." I need to start by telling you what happened the story. two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so she started from um, that scene um, with Baba Segi, you know, coming into UCH and just screaming and shouting and mm -hmm. all the doctors and nurses were like, what's wrong with this man? Shouting about his wife's damaged womb and uh, save me and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So they did all that. Um, um, so, so that happened. And of course in the present tense at the time, that was when he had just, um, his wife had just gone to the doctors. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. Not, not the landlady, all the wife. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying not to give away the plot. The whole, because I yeah, don't know the who, whole plot. <laughs> so, but my point is, so that was, you know, she told me that story and I got to find out some of the secrets and I thought it was just phenomenal. Mm. So I wanted to write it as a play mm -hmm. and I wanted, it, it was my way of kind of getting back, back. At, um, <laughs> at, at a lion and a jewel, you know? Um, but then I, I never um, did write it as a play. And when I was older and I'd written my first novel, it was Juvenalia, I'd written my second novel um, we'd almost sold it and then couldn't. <laughs> and then I was just so miserable. And my, my agent said, look, why don't we just write another story? And I said, well, there's this story I've been thinking of, but I want to write it as a play. And she said, tell me the story in one minute. As soon as I told her, she said, that's your next That's movie. the story. <laughs> and that was it. And the rest is it. <laughs> so at the end of the day, uh, reality you know, re 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 reality is um, interesting, more interesting sometimes than fiction, you know, <laughs> as people say. Yeah, what do they say? Stranger than fiction, fiction. right? <laughs> you know? Sometimes, we, sometimes that is, is, I mean, is all fiction not mined one way or another from mm -hmm. reality? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's so many, even the mobile phones that we use now and the Apple Watch and all that. And when you think of the fact of, you know, when these things were kind of turning up in novels, you know, sci-fi sci novels or, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. futuristic novels from, you know, 50, 30 years ago, everybody thought the people were kind of crazy. But mm -hmm. here we are. You know, it's almost like if you can think it. Honestly, you can. You like can exactly, exactly. Now, uh, would you say that, um, like one scholar, you know, uh, concluded that you were trying to condemn polygamy in that text? One, um, one scholar, you know, said that. And another one suggests that um, in creating Baba Segi, um, you were trying to recreate contemporary masculinity. Which one is it? Or oh, is it none of this? Probably more of the latter. Um, in terms of um, um, the the in terms of commentary, my commentary on polygamy, I don't make a secret of the fact that I think it's a very difficult institution to survive in, and the reason I think that is 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 very simple. There's it's not theoretical or or anything. It's simply that when you put people especially women in an environment that is so competitive. And I think this would be true of any human being. It brings out the worst instincts. And that's because of the competitiveness of the environment. So even the most benign, the most, I mean, even the most uh, kind of soft-spoken, lovely, generous, sweet woman, will often get into a polygamous um, situation. And go crazy. I think in order to survive, <laughs> yeah. they have to change. Mm. Because if they remain like that, people will walk all over them mm -hmm. and take them mm -hmm. for granted. Mm -hmm. 
So what they do then is that even when you didn't have a history of being, uh, of sort of resorting to your wiles or, you know, being manipulative or slightly deceptive at times, even if that's not your character, eventually you will have to be begin to embody that mm -hmm. because it becomes a, a it becomes, you know, it, it's, it then it's about survival, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I think that, that sort of environment um, can be very difficult for women, but I also think it's, it's um, complicated because um, you have to change your mm. personality, yeah. you know, yeah. and I'm not mm. sure how much good that does to the person to the family on the impact on the children and the impact on the wider society. So, so polygamy in itself, I think is, um, is not the, the, the fairest of, of institutions. I would, you know, like to see a situation where, where women, if they wanted to, could also acquire um, more husbands. <laughs> But, I mean, I know it sounds funny, but oh, crazy. Um, that's the, it's, it's kind of the, it's the only way to have any kind of, um, I don't want even want to say equality because that's not what I'm looking at here, but just that freedom, the freedom, fairness. And it's fairness. freedom and it's fairness. Do, do you understand what I mean? Exactly. And when you talk about polyandry, for instance, you see mm -hmm. a lot of men recoil in disgust, mm -hmm. you know, but this is all about socialization. It's yeah. what we've been taught to believe. Yeah. Most women, including myself, if your parents don't teach you that at the end of the, the reason we, they teach us to do all the things they're teaching us is so we can be good wives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason they tell us how to cook is so that we can cook in our husband's house. Well, the reason husband. they'll tell you, go and back that child, go and do it so that you can become a good mother. Mm. So inevitably then your life as a woman is very much about service to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Exactly. Rather mm. than things under undertaking and, uh, you know, and adopting, you know, elements that serve you as a human that's being. But that's because we live in a society also where, you know, women just don't have the opportunities and the choices that, mm. that men have. Mm. So this, the, I, so for me, I, I talk, talk about polygamy in that way, but it's not as if I see it as an institution that's going anywhere fast. It's mm -hmm. just not, especially not in this society. Things are so uneven. Mm -hmm. Women are so alienated and mm -hmm. removed from the economic, the structured economic fabric of the country oh. that inevitably they will continue to have to rely on men. And once you're in a situation where your economic your, your survival <laughs> depends on a man. Um, a man. You have to accept whatever is um, thrown at you. No, you that, don't that, have a choice. That, that's a key point there. That's a key point there. Now, at the risk of um, uh, judging or trying to, uh, you know, um, analyze, you know, beyond uh, the ordinary, that text. But I could say that... Um, don't you think that somehow you have also presented yourself as uh, a victim of the, you know, this patriarchal structure? Because at the end of the day, you weren't able to resolve the issues in the favor of the women. At the end of the day, Baba Segi seemed to have the upper hand. He had to give out instructions you know, to the women, this is what I, you know, this is how you must relate from now on, this is what you're going to do, you know, and all that. Deciding their faith, so to speak, is it because you feel you are handicapped also uh, by those patriarchal structures in the society? No, I'm certainly not. In okay. fact, I enjoy immense privilege just as an individual and as a human being. 
I live alone. My husband lives in another flat in my estate because I told him I wanted to have my own space. Um, I have my own business. I run my own life. I, you know, take responsibility. I look after my responsibilities. I, in fact, have in many ways, I think a lot of people would consider to be um, a good deal of what's good about both worlds. You know, so I'm 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 not hampered. Why I'm not why, why 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 did you not um, give them you know this this freedom? Why why did you I not at the end of the day give okay, them so the independence? Was, so Bolanle got it right. Mm-hmm. Bolanle in left. a way. But in let a me way. ask you a question. Well, she left. She 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 she, she, she didn't have a choice. You know, it mm-hmm. was like. The one thing I'm hoping will root me to this place is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to follow the, the route that the other wives took. So it's better for me just to go, which is fine. But let me ask you a question. Do you remember when Baba Segi asked all the wives to leave? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. How did they end up staying in the house? What happened? How did that happen? Do you remember how in the end... Thinking about their children and their so status. Who, who was thinking about the children? <laughs> the, the women. <laughs> do, do you not remember the speech that Iyasegi Iyase came and got on, yes. got on yes. mm-hmm. and said, who, are, who is the father? Who, yeah, it's you. Children. You brought them up. <laughs> but she... I've, I'd also mentioned earlier in the novel that she... She knew him well. She knew, remember how she got him to agree to, for her to drive, for her to, she knows how to press his buttons. Mm-hmm. And that's the point I'm trying to make, that okay. it seems like the man was there saying, you will no longer go to the shop. You will. But the fact is, how did they get to that position? How did they get from get out of my house to that? Again, it was the women. So the subtle the power. Of course, they want, they didn't want to leave because they didn't want to render their children fatherless, so to speak. Mm. However, they also knew, Yasegi knew exactly what to say to Baba Segi to make mm-hmm. him change his mind. Mm-hmm. And she also knew that ultimately, Baba Segi too didn't want to be seen as a man who had been dealt that kind of hand by women. Mm, mm. So it was safer for him. A man him, who is not a man. Mm. was safer for him to also keep them. And the truth is, and we must never ever forget this, because this is something that's really important to me about the novel that I think a lot of people miss. For most of my life, um, both for personal um, personal reasons, but also the things that I have read and come to understand, um, I have had reason to, to really think about what is it that makes a person a father? And the conclusion that I've reached is that it has very little to do with sperm donation. Mm. It has everything to do with raising a child, loving a child, building a child's confidence, showing a child that you care, being interested in the things that the child is interested in, making sure they don't suffer. You cannot deny that Baba Segi played his part as a father. Mm -hmm. So are we going to say he's not a father to those children because he didn't donate the sperm. Mm. And it, 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 the other thing is that I've seen and I'd heard men saying things like, hmm, I can never live with another man's, how, another man's child in my house. Mm. I can never do this. I can never do that. You know, and I, I feel, I just think it's so wrong headed and, 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 and has its basis in and kind of socialization. Patriarchy. Yeah. And, and a stupid level of patriarchy for that <laughs> matter, because, you know, it's almost, it's, it's dehumanizing for the, this child who didn't ask to be born. You, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for me, that it, the book is also a commentary on, on what fatherhood really is all right so um, you're trying to recreate the contemporary masculinity now 
in in its, of its men own... who nurture rather than who serve. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'm trying to, if I, if, you know, and um, I say I'm trying to, but I wasn't really trying actively. But what I was more doing was, it was more about what was happening in my mind mm. and making sure that I put my thoughts down and whilst pointing to issues that were really important to me, you know, and for me, even with the wives, they all represented certain aspects of society that I felt needed attention. Mm. Wonderful. That, that, that's it's so great. Um, well, maybe uh, finally on uh, what was the last thing? question. Wait, what was the second question you had? There was one about polygamy. And then yes. there was one about redefining masculinity. The masculinity, yes. 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 Well, I have a lot. There's a lot to say and the about new masculinity. social, you know, the new social um, solution to male infertility, I guess. <laughs> well, that men that- don't have to donate their sperm to be fathers. They don't, but mm-hmm. also, but of course, I'm not advocating for what they call paternity fraud uh, <laughs> these days, or, yeah. uh, or saying that women should, you know, um, go and do that as a solution. Mm-hmm. Number one, I can totally understand how it became a solution and why, you know, but I also feel that. Um, that if men are more open and if men can accept their vulnerability, uh-huh. look at it, for instance, doctor, the, any family where any time, look, look at the church situation, churches, Pentecostal, altar call, women who are barren, women who are looking for children, women who need to It's always God's about face, the women. Come out. How many times have you heard a pastor say, Men who have men. those sperm count come out. <laughs> it's always about have the women. Ever? Exactly. So that was also something that was bugging me. Mm. And I'd kind of followed that through my life, wondering why people would say that. Why immediately there's a problem. It's about the woman in a, in a, in a, you know, in a relationship. It's the woman who's got a, an issue who's barren. Whereas clearly... Probably a good there are barren men too. of the time. It's, <laughs> it's actually the man. But even the religious institutions do not, they, even they cannot challenge patriarchy. Everybody's subdued. The reason they the don't bring the men, yeah, they don't bring those men out because they consider it to be humiliating for ego. the man. Yeah, the ego but of the man. The woman <laughs> can be used to and mop the, the floor. Anytime, unfortunately, her emotions don't matter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So incisive. So so interesting. Um, uh, let's uh, let me con- congratulate you on your new steps on trying to uh, turn the book into a film. What are your expect? Do. What are your expectations on that? We, we, we can't that has pass nothing, by without talking about have, that. Okay, it doesn't have much to do with me. Um, yeah. Um, and I have to say that the, all the credit should really go to to Mo Abudu, who okay. has loved this book from about from 2017, mm. you know, and has been following me and just saying. We have to do this book. Ebony Life has to do this book. And I was very excited. I was excited because it was an African woman that was doing it, but also an African, because that's very important to me. Mm. One of my crusades um, has been, excuse me, has been the fact that um, Maryam Abba's book, So Long a Letter, Mm. for instance, was translated by a Nigerian who could speak French. Mm. Therefore, you had, even though we have these, you know, ridiculous borders um, um, that totally dis, um, sort of 
disrupt what ordinarily should be more uh, kind of comprehensive and like better functioning nation states that have not just been divided for the wiles of, of European colonizers. But, but the result is that within Africa, a book can travel from one part to the other. Um, and there's full understanding because in many ways, um, an African instinctively understands um, the issues of another African. We may ignore sure. it, but a lot of the time, sure. once we do, we can get it. We do. So it was for that very reason, um, and seeing the decline of that system. So what we have now is, so for instance, my novel, available in the UK, to, to be available in the French market, because it's been translated into French, okay. it had to travel um, to France, Mm. to a European woman who translated it would call me and say, oh, this, how, what is, what is this about? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Da, 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 da. And I, all the time I was thinking to myself, my experience would probably be different if this book was being translated by a black person or by a Nigerian who mm. understood, who could do translation. Exactly. exactly. So the mm. idea the nuances. Of, Yes. So mm. that journey of going to France to come back to Africa, mm. for me, is just a long and ridiculous journey Honestly. where it could just be going from Africa to Africa, mm. even though there's going to be a language change. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. So part of what I am really interested in, uh, just as an activist, but also as part of what I do within the culture space, is to make sure that Africa retains as much as it can. So if there's a story that is going to be adapted for stage, if it's a, an African story, how great would it be if it could be adapted by another African or by another? And, and of course, for me, it's also critical to get women to, part, you know, to take part in these processes because mm -hmm. you know, I think that Africa would be so much better if it was you know, ruled by, if it was, um, if we, we had women leaders and, and I just strongly believe that men are, a lot of them are ill-equipped for leadership um, in a way that, that women simply are not. Women are, 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 from the minute they grow up, actually, they are being um, imbued with different elements of which constitute really good leadership, you know, looking after things, taking care of things in a way that men are not, you know. So for instance, the idea of a woman um, being the one who's kind of driving the, the film was, was very interesting to me and, and very important to me. So I'm as fascinated, I'm as interested, I'm as excited as everyone else, but I'm not um, an integral um, part of the process. I, I, I truly, truly hope that um, we're going to get something uh, fantastic as the book in the film. Uh, let's move on to Ake. Our time is fast um, running. Um, Ake, Ake, Ake Festival. Uh, what influenced, you know, your turning your attention to such um, um, a... Yeah, yeah, such such a big uh, event for art in a situation in a country in a society where, well, the passion for art seem to be dying. Mm -hmm. Is that is that something you're trying to address? Yes. And do you believe so, that literature can change the world? Two questions absolutely. in one. Absolutely. The last question, absolutely. We've just introduced something called One Read, which um, it's an app that um, the people can download, um, which has at the moment, a, you can get a book, a contemporary fantastic novel on the app for $1 a month. And it divides the, the book into 21 parts so that you literally read with everybody else over 21 days. And um, you you also can create a book club within the app and interact with other people, members of your book club as you're reading. But this is only three months old. 
uh, we're about to start our fourth novel um, in, a, in maybe tomorrow. But I strongly believe that we have a problem with empathy on the African continent. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of the ills that we see around leadership, and I focus a lot on leadership and governance. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you won't hear me talking about this much because I'm kind of known as somebody who is within the culture space. But the negative, the corrosive impact and influence that poor leadership has had on the people being led. The idea that you have leaders who are so insensitive and so out of touch with the needs of the ordinary man, a lot of it has to do with lack of empathy, mm -hmm. which is actually, again, when I, what I was saying earlier about the way girls are brought up and the way boys are brought up, mm. but that's, Thing that means that our, the men who become leaders ha don't have empathy or the empathy switch is broken in their brains it has a lot to do with the way they are brought up mm -hmm. if your sister by women uh, you go and make amala <laughs> you go and make amala you go and play football from that from that time boys not only develop a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. you know about their space in the world, how they are there for fun. They are there to enjoy, right? The women are just there to work. But it means that they stop. So even at the point where mommy makes those decisions, daddy, right? The boy by not, the more that boy goes out to play football, the more the boy is disconnected from the experience of the girl who, while he is having fun, is, is uh, making Amala. Where I'm going with this is that where leadership lacks empathy, because these men are really the men who were once boys, right? And as such, when they're leading and, during, and, and in governance, that lack of empathy, you can almost always see it. And I really believe that reading is one of the ways that we can actually help people reconnect with the emotions of others. Mm. I even in terms of space, I'm Nigerian, something happens in Mozambique. I'm like, mm, Mozambique, ah, sorry, do. <laughs> and I move on. So but the day I read a book about from a Mozambique from an author from that country, and I read about the characters and I care about them, it changes the way, when I hear Mozambique next, I'll be like, ah, hey, my, hey. my character's mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you, you make those connections, yes. you know, exactly. like Zakes, mm -hmm. um, Zakes and Dal was telling me that the entire, when he was in South Africa, that the entire um, um, academic elite um, during the civil war, they were all on Bi the Biafra side. And I, and, and it was explaining that the reason was because they let things fall apart. Read the book. That was the only reason. Hmm. So all of them were just, they, all they could relate to was the people from the A region that things fall apart was, was kind of based on. And I, hmm. it, that is the reality of our lives. Hmm. Without books, or with the poor diet of what we read, if you're only reading the holy books, right? Mm. You are limiting your own scope as a human being because you are not getting the full story. You have to, fiction, and that is the power of fiction. Mm. Nonfiction is important too, and it's great, and so are history books and everything. But fiction can touch you in ways that sometimes other texts can't, you know, because you can get mm -hmm. lost in a story. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I can relate. Process, it's great for developing um, the, the empathy switch. Mm. So that's one of the things that um, is important to me. The fact that I really do believe that, that arts can change the world. I, I, I'm sold on it. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen it happen. 
Look, I've seen it happen at Ake Festival. I've seen people come to Ake Festival and leave and tell me that I'm leaving now, but I'm telling you that I'm never going to be the same again because of the things they've heard and because of the interactions that they've had. I used to be, well, a, a very active member of the Association of Nigerian Authors. Yeah. But it would have a, a, a annual convention. Yes. And the annual convention consists most of writers mm. and journalists right so it yeah. was quite an insular organization but i from writing baba segi and visit excuse me visiting a lot of festivals um around the world i was i realized that actually 90 percent of the people who attend these events are non-writers mm. they are just people who are there to experience to enjoy to meet to show their enthusiasm exactly. And I thought to myself that we need to have something like that in Nigeria. Mm. So I thought to myself, okay, I could say yeah, we need, I will be waiting for the person to do it. But that's not my character because I was brought up, um, I have, I'm the youngest of six children and I have five brothers. And right from when I was young, if whenever I was angry with my brothers, my mom would say, calm down, be calming down. My mom would say, calm down. You are their mother. You mm. are their mother. That's, you have to love them. You have to help them. When they are married, when they're this, you'll be the one they will look to. They will do this. So even though I was the last, and my mm. eldest brother is 12 years older than me, I always felt I had a responsibility mm. to do certain <laughs> things. You know, it's crazy, but it's great. So I'm not the sort of person, therefore, who, when something needs to be done, I will just sit and say, well, let's hope and wait for somebody to do it. No, I go out and I do it. I go out and I do it. And I do it because I can, because I do have the skills. What, what, is, what skills do I have? One, I spent 13 years in a classroom as a teacher in Nigeria, in the UK. So, I mean... No, not 13 years less, <laughs> sorry. But the, the idea is for me, I know how to organize things. I, I know how to get involved with timetabling for, for 400 students or 500 students within a school. Mm. So how different are the skills that I need to bring to organizing a festival to make sure that people are happy, that people are excited, that people are engaged? So I really wanted to create something like that because I believe that Nigeria, I mean, if Nigeria can't have a world-class literary festival mm. on the continent that caters to black people, to caters to Africans, then who, who else? And it just didn't make any sense to me that we didn't have a festival that was, you know, kind of, causing the, the right, making the right kind of noises and disrupting the status quo. Mm -hmm. So the idea mm -hmm. was to start that um, for that reason. And lastly, and this is a simple one, honestly, um, I really just wanted to expose as many people as possible to what I call my pursuit of excellence. So everything that... I do the stand. I try to raise the standards very high. I work largely with young people who are out kind of out of uni, mid twenties. And part of it again is showing them what they can achieve with dedication, with hard work, with patience, with drive. And mm. a lot of them are girls. A lot of them are women. And for that reason also, I really need them to understand that. Mm. they don't have anything to fear and if they go out into the world to do certain things they, that they, they will look behind them and find an army mm. and i really want want yeah. them to have that sort of self-confidence that's that's really significant that's really significant wonderful um um idea and um action is there something fresh, something unique that we should expect as a feature in Ake this year? 
Oh, you it's, don't want to let it out yet. No, there's a lot that I, the, pro, the, the program isn't out, but the guests are out. So you can already see that we have 180 amazing speakers this year. This is the largest festival we've ever had. And I think what's amazing is also the fact that it's online. And we, we will announce soon, but apart from being online, there's about to be another way to access the festival, but we haven't announced it yet. Um, but um, we have Maris Conde is, as the headliner. Um, of course, we have Professor Walishu Inka, who will be joining us as well. And then we have people like Tayari Jones, the winner of uh, the Women's Prize, I think last year or the year before, mm, mm. we have um, Marlon James, Booker Prize. Whoa! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> we have, um, oh God, there's so ma many. Um, there's so many. I, I mm. mean, how do, where and how do I start? And, you know, I talked about, you know, it's also quite a Pan-African mm. um, gathering. Mm -hmm. Because I, the same way that, and this is, um, this is unusual, I, um, I mean, I find it that people find it unusual sometimes. But when I think of, of Africa, Africans, and, um, and what needs to be done, sometimes I feel it's not a conversation that we can have just as Africans, and that, you know, Black people all over the world, you know, also have to somehow, you know, um, get involved in that conversation. Don't forget that Ake Festival, they call it the largest convergence of black creatives in the world. And that is a thing of huge pride for me. The fact that it's largely, mostly African. Africans. When, where, where it's non-Africans, they are talking about Africa mm. because we don't, enough of those spaces where we can just be in our our feelings our space you know our space we can own it we are not whiteness is not the center european or whatever their values are are not the center of you know they're not centered at a k festival mm. what is centered and what is central to us is the experience of blackness and the experience of africanness Mm. What are the challenges yeah. you face, you know, uh, putting together this wonderful event? Fundraising is the biggest challenge that I face. Fund. But I think, yeah, it's always fundraising. These mm -hmm. things are, are frightfully expensive. They're mm -hmm. not cheap, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. They're not cheap. But let me tell you some of the... So have the you, how, how have I, you been coping? Well, very, we're very lucky. Um, for the last three years now, we've had Sterling Bank as a partner. And they've just stood by us like we love this festival we're going anywhere with it so even this year when i said see guys let's leave it this covid thing is not they said no 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 time is more important than this one mm. we are going to have that festival and we want it to be online a few weeks later google also joined as one of the partners wow which is wonderful. <laughs> um so yeah it's 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 amazing the mm -hmm. the journey and it's another thing that I hope inspires young people mm -hmm. that when you stay with an idea, it's not easy. Mm. It's these things are never easy, but you almost have to take the challenges as part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. If you are driving from Lagos to Ibadan, the road is never going to be smooth throughout. Mm -hmm. There will mm -hmm. be pits and, and bumps and, you know, there'll be different levels at different times. You've just got to accept it as part of the journey and strengthen and arm yourself with resilience, but also be driven, um, be goal oriented and just go for it. Mm. And that's really kind of what I have done. Um, it doesn't, it's no, you're not going to get rich by <laughs> organizing a festival. Sure. There's very little in the literary um, ecosystem that's uh, particularly um, lucrative, uh, profitable, but I do it because I feel that I have to do it. Mm. Um, and the passion, I have a literary passion. Yeah, it, it's it's somebody has to, you know. And 
when I see more people coming into this space, looking to start more festivals, I just get really excited. Mm. Um, so we've been, you know, so we've supported, for instance, um, the, the, the guys who started the Gabaroni Festival in Botswana. Every year, for instance, I, I make sure I am at a Bantu Festival in South Africa. So the idea of just being, you know, being around to support, to offer help to others. Being the literary thinking, mother. It's well, I well, I'm, I'm, a mother. I'm a bit young for that, <laughs> oh, you're but, not. And, but you know, um, we let's just it's and it's not just literature, it's culture, it's film, mm-hmm. it's dance, mm-hmm. it's theater, it's all the different um aspects of the arts that I think are just so important. We have so much unemployment, you know, with the youth and there's so much that can be done. Yeah. We don't even have like a proper dance school mm. in this com- country. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Mm. With all the beautiful dance steps that, that we, we have <laughs> in this country. We have not those are the things that amaze me. So if I had money now, I'll just go to Badagri or somewhere and go and start one, you know? And that's why I should have married a, a billionaire. But I <laughs> and that's, I did now. That's, that's, ah. good. that's my last question. Because um, uh, our time is far spent. But on a lighter note, there is um, a very interesting question I've been meaning to ask you. Is it because of this, your passion for uh, uh, literature and the arts, you know, and everything that you sought out the man that is your husband. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> well, was it deliberate was on your part no. to search him out? <laughs> no, no. I wish. I wish. I wish it were, but unfortunately, <laughs> it's not. And um, we, we we have such an interesting uh, relationship and we have had actually, we've been together now um, going to 22 years. Um, No, I didn't. It was just about the person. Um, It was just about the person. And I think he would probably say the same, you know, we met in Nigeria. Um, He came back to see me in Nigeria then I went to America and we got married in Manhattan. We got married on the third occasion, the third time we actually ever saw each other. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Did a, a lot of our love happened over email and phone calls. So, cause he was living in England. I was living in Nigeria and we just, we communicated like crazy and, um, and I think he's just um, an incredible person. There's so much that I, I am and that I, um, and I guess I could sense that thing about him, that he was kind of different because, you know, this is, he's somebody who has never tried to stop or to get in the way of any of my dreams. You can't be the son of, uh, uh, you know, an icon and not be different. Well, this is true. This is true. You know, this is what you're saying is so true. You know what? Because I was having this conversation with my best friend yesterday and she was saying something about my children. And I said, well, I don't know. You know, that's how we see it. And she said, look, she said, Lola, actually, I don't even know why I'm saying this because they're your children. You and Ola Okun, how else would they be? They're going to think in that way. So you're very (laughs) right. I, I, you know, but he's also just somebody who doesn't quite have a sense of this concept of you shouldn't do certain things because you're a woman. Mm. It, it just, it, it doesn't in his, it just does. He, it doesn't exist for him. Wow. He Wonderful has man. so much respect and regard for women. Mm. He thinks that women are just the business. And with me, he also just, just always in the back, just quietly 
you know, he, he, he likes a lot of um, silliness as well. So if, if we go somewhere now and they're dancing and they say somebody should come and shake their bum bum on stage, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there jejelly drinking my origin. <laughs> we say, no, now go now. Ah, ah, why do you want to spoil today for everybody? <laughs> go and do the dance. <laughs> you know, so he has no sense of, he has such a great sense of fun. We have, um, and, and um, has always been a real rock for me. Like, just go. Yes, do it. You can do it, you know. That's always been yeah, it. For He's you. normally yeah. the first person who reads my books, you know. He wanted to be a writer as well, but he, mm. but he decided not to because... You know, there's very little. Even me, that I'm a daughter in love, that I was Baba, a writer. Before. Baba had done everything for everybody. They would, that's it. They would. They, people still sometimes say it's because it's of because the, <laughs> Professor Shinka that my book is um, successful. And Imagine the thing that. is that from in my what I deliberately did when the book was published, I just asked them to send one to his house. That's it. <laughs> I, he didn't even know that I was reading it and he read wow. it and he sent it to me and he sent me his comments and I thought it was interesting <laughs> it should be interesting yeah. it should be interesting let me round off on this how does it feel to be the daughter-in-law of our darling Papa Nobel laureate Professor Shoyinka how does it feel um I don't, I, I, I'm not sure that I have a lot of special privileges, I have to be honest, but I have my own relationship with him. Mm. I mean, I had a, a, you know, a relationship with him prior to even meeting my husband, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, and I think he's an absolute, um, uh, God, such a blessing to this country and to this continent and of mm. course to the world. So I've never met any generation. Yeah, I've never, we, we are lucky that we were alive to be in the same space as this man. And I say this because, um, you know, I, every time I interact with him, I remove myself from being a daughter-in-law and I try to always relate to him as just a writer that I admire immensely. And um, every time I, I interact with him, it's a learning experience. His breadth of the, his interests, his view on the world, his the total absence of malice in his personality. Mm. There's so much about him that's admirable, and um, and uh, he is uh, worthy of all the respect, all the accolades, and all the regard that, that we can muster. You know, he is a truly remarkable human being beyond being my father-in-law i can't even you know make this comment based on that it's just as a human being um and i admire him immensely and it's a great honor to be able to have him at Taki festival again honestly we envy you mm. we envy you for, oh. for yeah <laughs> for having this great opportunity oh Thank you so, so much, Lola Shonei, for being my Thank guest you. today. I really um, enjoy our time together. I still have so much. So I can we tell can you. We can do another one. We sure. can do another one later. We will. After we will. Ake Festival. After Ake. I'm happy. Because definitely mm. issues will arise from Ake that um, I'll need us to discuss. And I'm... I, I, I'm promising you that I'm going to do a splash of Ake on my website, you know. So, oh. uh, yeah, so definitely we are going to have another one. And thank God you're promising now before the whole world that we're going to have another yes, interview. Yes, like yes. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm happy to. And please let your 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 the Ake students. Festival is free this year. Let okay. your students know. Oh, they will. Should, they should log on because I mean, there'll be many authors already that, expectant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of authors that are Africans that are doing incredible things are, um, you know, are 
are, are going to be featured. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. worth we it. We can't wait. We can't wait. Thank, thank you so, thank so, you so much. much. It's been a wonderful yes, time no, no. this past uh, year. Hello, students. Hello, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see your faces. Awesome. <laughs>